You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. Hello and welcome to Cancelled, the podcast that looks at silly celebrity crimes and assigns charges and sentences to them so that we can all get on with our lives. I'm Jessie Stevens, and I'm joined by... Claire Stevens. And Claire, before we get into it, do you have a lazy girl story to start our show today? I do, and I thought this might be a nice one for you. Okay. Jessie, this comes from Mia, who emailed All right. and said... Hopefully this is the right place to send this through. And that's what I love about lazy girls. They're never quite certain no. if they're doing the right thing. I get a DM. I'm not sure if this is the right one. I don't know either. Do we have a process? Absolutely no, not. But you wrote something. I want to see commend it. commend you. Yeah. I want to see it. She said, When I was heavily pregnant, all I wanted to do was eat cheese and savoy bickies all day. Mm. I had no motivation to do anything else, including showering. It was such a drainer but also a necessity. So to motivate myself to have my daily shower, I'd bring a Tupperware box of cheese and biscuits in with me and eat them as I was showering. As she was showering. No regrets, X. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. I brought a snack into the bathroom. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been at home and you're like, oh, i got to go to the toilet or something, and you're like, well, I wouldn't want to get hungry. So you throw something in your mouth for the ride mm. And then you find yourself sitting there doing a wee chewing and you're like, is this wrong? It feels weird. I don't think it's a problem it feels hygiene. It unhygienic, but it was already in my mouth. Yes. Yes. So I think it's fine. Same with having a shower because lazy girls don't like to get hungry because they worry that they'll get lightheaded. <laughs> yeah. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. I get anxious going into the bathroom because I go, what if I'm bored? So yeah. I'm listening to a podcast and I have a shower, listen to a podcast podcast ends while I'm in the shower, dry my hands, change the podcast. We can't have silence. Bring a, bring a treat. We can't have silence, boredom or hunger. No. Because then what happens? We panic. Crisis. <laughs> yeah, crisis. On today's episode, we are talking about a man peripherally known to the council courtroom who has somehow never been trialled himself. I can't be. I really felt that we had. We no, hadn't. No. no. Until now. There's a few people who have the vibe of having appeared in the council courtroom yep. without having yet stood trial. Never properly in the spotlight. No. And that man's name is Robert Pattinson. Hey, I'm uh, Robert Pattinson. Uh, like a lot of vampires, turned into a bat. Please say hello to Robert Pattinson. I'm going to talk about some of my iconic performances. <laughs> Claire, initial vibe on Rob P, Robbie Patty. Hates Hollywood, feels weird about his own career. But, like, what do you think of that? Like, do you think that he's a little bit, like, thinks he's too good for it? Yes. So my last kind of interaction with Robert yeah. was the Met Gala. Uh-huh. And he attended with Suki Waterhouse. I don't know what a Suki Waterhouse I is. I think it's Suki. It's Suki. Yeah. A Suki Waterhouse. <laughs> I quite like Suki. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Suki Waterhouse, yeah. And they were just kind of like bantering and I was like, Kristen Stewart was there but he was with her and I just, I think, okay, you want to know what I think about him? You want to know my vibe? I think he was too hurt by, by Kristen, Kristen Stewart cheating and that gave me the ick. <laughs> okay. And I think that your pronunciation of Suki actually revealed something. I think you think Robert's a Sook. Yeah. I think he has yeah. a Suki vibe. Yeah. A Suki haircut, a Suki. He's Suki. He's Look like, about you him. cheated on me. And well, it's well. like, well, she did it badly. And that's funny. And it was a while ago. Mm. And your relationship was fake anyway. So. Robert Douglas Thomas Pattinson. Okay. We've I have a got note a here. Do you want to throw another first name in there? Because that's too many. <laughs> he was born in 1986 to rich people, which is fine. He's but British. It's also a He's fact. British, isn't he? Yeah. That confirms my theory that every He's British rich. person who is famous is rich and or connected to royalty. Continue. Yes, well. He was the youngest of three kids, and in my opinion, he has mad youngest child energy. <laughs> yeah. Which is a consistent theme. His mother was a scout at a modeling agency. And can you imagine? Your Robert gets to the age of 12, you're just, I don't know, you're wiping up, you're doing your dishes and you turn around and you go, oh, oh, Robert, 
<laughs> Look at Robert's face. Oh, that's convenient. I don't know if I'm just seeing this because I'm a modelling scout mm. or if my son has that face. Mm. And he does. And he does. He's got an interesting face. He's got a face for modelling. Interesting. I want to see photos of him modelling when he was young because I can't picture it. Well, there aren't a lot and we will get to that. All right. He attended a fancy school called Tower House School. Previous alumni include Louis Theroux, Tom yep. Hardy and Jack Whitehall. Oh, see, they all went to the same school. Aren't they all kind of the same person? Think about it. Mm. Like they're all oddly similar in terms of how they look. I feel like you'd go to that school and every boy had dark hair, blue Pale eyes skin. and was the same height. Yep, yep, yep. But he was expelled. Naughty, Robert. Why was he expelled? Well, he was stealing pornographic magazines from the post office. Oh, yeah. And then selling them to his schoolmates. This is a story I you might like have heard. I feel like Jack Whitehall bought one. <laughs> oh, I bought all of them. And Louis went, no. No. Oh, I'll make a documentary about that. I'll make it, but no. Tom Hardy would have bought one, yeah. but not Louis. Tom Hardy doesn't fit in there for me. Thought he was American. Anyway, yeah. continue. Okay. There's a detail about the selling of the porno mags that has never been focused on enough mm. until my personal deep dive, which took place late last night. <laughs> He was selling them to his schoolmates, this would have been in the 90s, for as much as £30 a magazine, which according to an inflation calculator I found on the internet would be like selling a porno for £67.50. Which in Aussie dollars? Which in Aussie dollars is $126.50. And that is a pornographic magazine. Is when you know your kids have too much money. At 12. Any kid. Who has 126 Aussie dollars. To buy a porno. Disposable income to buy a stolen porno (laughs) deserves a stolen porno. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You deserve it. But great business acumen. I think entrepreneurial. Mm. We've got an entrepreneurial, Cedric. He had like a black market for pornos. Magazines. And that was, you know, magazines went on to die. Yeah. If you can sell a stolen magazine for 126 Aussie dollars, I mean, all power to you. But he got expelled, so he's a bad, bad thief. When he got expelled, he went to a shitter school. But that doesn't matter because men like Robert fall upwards. He started working as a fashion model as a teenager and then he got really into singing and he planned on going to uni, but he couldn't. Claire, why couldn't he go to uni? Great question. Well, obviously it's because Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire went over schedule. And, yeah, he was Cedric Diggory. And this strapping young lad must be Cedric, am I right? Yes, sir. I'd say that's his hottest role. Yeah. I- I'd actually say hottest role. Don't know if he's a blonde. I don't know. You know the prefect's bathroom on the fifth floor? It's not a bad place for a bar. We'll put it up for our listeners, but I did have a look and I just went... It's not just about the aesthetic, it's about the energy and mm. it's about who that character was in the books and how much we all loved him. And how shocked we were by his death, frankly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's my son! This is my boy! This is my boy! <laughs> yes, and look, it was a misadventure for that one. He couldn't go to uni. He was doing Goblet. My structure for today is as follows. Music career, feet, rap music. Secondly, disrespecting Twilight. And thirdly, being a pathological liar. Oh, wow. Firstly, music career. Robert Pattinson's rap name is Big Tubbs, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Doesn't suit him. Not at all. Apparently he was very self-conscious about his weight growing up. Oh, Big Tubbs. He's a musician. So he's been playing piano and guitar since he was four. But according to this article I read called... Revisiting Robert Pattinson's Forgotten Music Career. Basically, nothing he's done can be found on any streaming platform. I don't work in the music industry, but Robert Pattinson has a discoverability problem. (laughs) He has also never signed to a label or recorded a studio album. So the question is, is it a forgotten music career or did the music career simply never happen? (laughs) Oh, wow. What a riddle. Claire, I want you to hear his singing voice. Oh, How about beautiful. That? How about that? I got it here. He actually sings on some tracks in Twilight. So did you know no. that? No. Yeah, no, he did. He did. Well, I thought I wouldn't be surprised if I heard that he had dabbled in musical theatre. 
Well, he hasn't. That's not <laughs> something that he enjoys doing because my theory is he is actually not very good. So what I'm going to do is find this song for you. The person who has written this article says it doesn't look like his voice matches his mm. face. My question is, do you think that voice belongs to Robert Pattinson? <laughs> no. Because I think it absolutely does. If I had to <laughs> guess... Who sung that? It's him because it's not American. No, he does an American. It's it's uh-huh. he's got an American twang to his singing voice, which is odd because he's British. It's because he wants to be Bonnie Vere. Okay, it's so Bonnie Vere. Yeah, so he's he's like I basically want to be Bonnie Vere, and he sings songs and he's like I'm a freaky guy. Ronald's <laughs> Twilight. It's hard to be a musician, and I think there are a lot of these men. Mm-hmm who are actors, just beautiful people, who have tried to make it the music industry and everyone says, no, we don't want to hear your voice. We want to look at your face. Yeah, yeah, And if I yeah. can't see your face, mm. which I can't if I'm listening to your voice, no, I don't want it. Well, he's also played guitar for this band called Death Grips, right? And as I was researching this, the first search term that emerged when I looked up Death Grips, what does he play, was why is Death Grips so bad? Oh, no. And what do we do in the cancel courtroom, Claire? Follow our nose. Yeah. <laughs> so he features in this film clip and also is doing the guitar. And I'd just like you to listen to a small snippet to just tell me what you think of this song right here. <laughs> There are a few problems. Major problem, no melody. <laughs> no melody. No guitar. <laughs> no guitar. No guitar. I hate it. I hate it. It sounds like someone having a mental breakdown. <laughs> it does. Is what it sounds like. And the like. film clip is a man who I assume is Robert Pattinson. With birds. Or attacking a bird. <laughs> Killing a bird. Oh, I really it sounds don't like, like the killing it. of birds. Stick to what you're good at. In 2010, Robert said he would like to rap with Eminem. Oh, no, too you've ambitious. S- you've simply not earned it. It reminds me of when Lindsay Lohan went on Twitter and was like, "Let's do a collab, Lady Gaga." And it's like, <laughs> no, you're not on the no, same no, no. level. No, not on the same level. And I get it because similar level of fame, but in different domains. Exactly. Exactly. Claire, we're moving on to disrespecting Twilight. Mm -hmm. We've done a cancelled episode on Twilight and there was a lot to discuss. But you don't get to be in the movie and then in on the joke. (laughs) You (laughs) are the joke. You are the joke. Over the years, Pattinson has been critical of Twilight and he has made some frankly rude remarks about our good friend Stephanie Meyer. Speaking to E in 2008, Pattinson said about the Twilight books, when I read it, because that's how he, he's just, mm. And he's always a little bit messy and unkempt. Yeah, yeah. He's silky. When I read it, it seemed like I, w- I was convinced that Stephanie was convinced she was Bella. And, uh, and you, it, wasn't, it was like it was a book that wasn't supposed to be published. And you're like reading her, her sort of sexual fantasy about some... And when, especially when she says, oh, it was based on a dream. And it's like, oh, I've, met, I've had this dream about this really sexy guy. And she just writes this book about it. And then he continued. And like some things about Edward are so specific. And it's like, I was just convinced that it's like this woman is mad. She's completely mad and she's in love with her own fictional creation. And like sometimes you like feel like uncomfortable reading this thing. Okay, to that I say obviously. 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 And and that's why women everywhere (laughs) orgasm over that book. Over that book. Over all those books was because Stephanie Meyer had was created. having a sexual experience <laughs> with herself <laughs> on, the page. on the page and then she gave that to Robert Pattinson and I'm sorry were you not paid a healthy sum <laughs> to be he part of that? He was paid well over 100 million dollars. Sorry no you just don't get to do that and this is the thing men get to turn around and be like yeah, uh, yeah that's yeah, a woman's yeah. fantasy movie. do you think bloody Kristen Stewart got to say that? No she's had to pretend she's Bella her whole career yeah. 
Have some respect. And you know what? Have you ever tried to write a book? No, you haven't tried to write a book. And you, you tried to write a song about killing birds <laughs> and we had to listen to that. <laughs> when you write a book, it's weird. Yeah. Weird things happen. Happen to your subconscious. And it's embarrassing because you made it up. And it's creepy and it's like, oh, it's like it's some kind of dream. Yeah, it's like it's some kind of dream. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Also, bitch in your group chat. Mm. Why are you bitching to an interviewer when Stephanie is definitely watching? I feel sorry for Stephanie. Yeah. She's created a cultural phenomenon that has made you a lot of money, sir. Yeah. And launched your career. Incredibly disrespectful. And here you are bitching about her orgasms. $100 million orgasms. <laughs> Allegedly at the premiere of Twilight, the first movie, it was all too much and he said he couldn't handle it anymore and he ran out of the premiere. Oh, come on. We can all sit through it. Unnecessarily dramatic is what that is. I saw a scene from Twilight. It's coming up on my TikTok at the moment and I love when Bella gets pregnant and oh, the yeah, baby has to eat through the her. placenta. Yeah. He's, he's critical of that. I don't <laughs> – shut up. You could tell – he, he didn't believe ashamed. it. He didn't believe it. <laughs> he said in an interview in 2010 that there were parts of Twilight that didn't really make sense. He said, I quote, it's like, why are they still going to high school? Like up until last year, they're 100 years old. Okay, this is what's annoying. He's got on Twitter and read some of the yeah, commentary. And he's like, I'm going to co-opt it and like preempt your criticism. And it's like, it's not funny when you say it. I've got in my notes, you are not too cool for Twilight, you are Twilight. <laughs> You are Edward. You are Edward. He was very critical of Edward and kept bringing up that he was 108 and said it was creepy that he was interested in this kid named Bella, which like, yeah, whatever, fair point. But then he said, if Edward was a non-fictional character and you met him in reality, he's one of those guys that would be an axe murderer. Robert, Edward couldn't be a non-fictional <laughs> character because he's a fucking vampire. <laughs> He's a fucking vampire. He's a, he's a mortal. <laughs> he's a mortal. <laughs> you idiot. Have you read the book? <laughs> he, he like um he's... shapeshift, not shapeshifts. He can like appear places out yeah, of nowhere. He's a vampire. He also shimmers in the sun. Yes. <laughs> There's no non-fiction version of Twilight because it's upsetting. 108 year olds aren't vampires. <laughs> They're just old. <laughs> <laughs> They're just old people with their own set of issues. <laughs> they are not vampires. In 2011, he had more complaining to do. Oh, fuck. Stop doing the movies if you're going to whinge. He found it very hard being typecast as just a very good-looking vampire and he said, being in such a specific pigeonhole right now, it's very strange. Having a persona people recognise is the thing that probably gets you paid the most. Yeah, fucking probably $100 yeah. million. But it's also the thing that virtually every actor in the world doesn't want because, like, no one would believe me if I wanted to play something ultra-realistic like a gangster or something. Okay, you want to play a gangster so you can do your music. He wants to do eight miles. <laughs> Two. An attack bird. <laughs> yeah. No one wants you to do that. You're not getting roles as a gangster. Because you don't look like a gangster. Because you are Robert Pattinson. <laughs> who went to a private school and you got kicked out for selling your pornos. <laughs> you're not convincing. You're not convincing as a gangster. And you're just not. Stop trying to be something you're not and stop trying not to be what you are. Yeah, <laughs> which is Edward. <laughs> which is a vampire. So he's looking at like Brad Pitt or whatever and he's like, well, look, I he goes do and does these roles. I could do that. You're not Brad Pitt. No. You're Edward. <laughs> so just own it. And there's five more movies to go. He said, I'm not getting any badass roles. And I've written, stop blaming Twilight and be better. <laughs> but it's also like, <laughs> I'm not getting any badass roles because you've got a lot more Twilight, <laughs> and Twilight <laughs> takes time. There were five. There is by so the many. final two movies, it was paid forty million each for each of like, the movies. Like, no, don't complain about your art. A news outlet asked Robert if he took anything from the set of the last movie, and laughing, he replied, "My dignity." <laughs> Wouldn't that mean he left his dignity at the set? I think he took it with him. He put it in his pocket. He took his dignity. Oh, right. To go and do death grips, big tubs, yeah, does yeah, kill yeah, more yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you're like, oh, it was all tongue in cheek, he never said he seriously didn't like Twilight. Well, in 2011, he literally said to Vanity Fair, it's weird being part of that, kind of representing something you don't particularly like. I need Robert Pattinson's inner conflict to be more private. <laughs> like, have we all done things we're ashamed of? Yes. Yes, absolutely. 
But we keep that to ourselves. I can't take it on. Mm -mm. I have enough on my plate without Robert Pattinson's regret Mm. reeking from every interview I watch without my consent. I never sought out to know how Robert Pattinson felt about Twilight (laughs) and yet his regret is rubbing off on me and it stings. He and Ben Affleck need a support group. Yes. Where they go, I did something or many things. Yes. That in hindsight I regret and it hurts my soul. And they can talk about it privately. And you know what else they can talk about? You know what role Robert Pattinson's done oh, since? Batman. It's done bloody the Batman. They think I'm hiding in the shadows. But I am the shadows. Oh, God. And that's the weird thing. It's like, oh, I did Twilight, but, you know, it wasn't really me. me. So now I'm just going to go do Batman. <laughs> well, pff. I'd argue Twilight just as bad. Is, is more a piece of art than Batman. But, Clem, maybe now we look back and go, you know what, those movies were imperfect and maybe he had a point. No. Because Robert came out last year and he says it's not cool to hate on Twilight anymore. That's so 2010. <laughs> oh, so you get to decide yeah, yeah. when you can hate on Twilight. Well, I feel like hating on it now. And then, uh, he was in an interview with maybe Zoe Kravitz who was like, oh, I never watched it. And he's like, it's not cool to hate on Twilight anymore. It was only cool when I did it in 2011. She just didn't say it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Some people are busy. Okay, on to Robert Pattinson being a pathological liar. Confusingly, he appears to be a pathological liar. This would be fine if he didn't occasionally tell the truth. (laughs) I think I've picked up on little bits of this. Yes. Go on. That is what is confusing. Early last year, Pattinson admitted that he's been lying to the press since 2009. He said, I definitely do get a certain high from it. There's a little gremlin inside of me that thinks, just say something shocking. You're only here for a few minutes. Say something terrible. There's a kind of perverse glee I get from that. But I've given my publicist a number of heart attacks. A woman named Carrie Whitmer wrote an article for The Ringer where she spent weeks of her life deciphering his lies from the truth. Oh, wow. Her investigation is thorough and it begins with a prologue that reads, To understand when the lies started and what the lies are, it's important to understand Robert Pattinson before he started lying. (laughs) I'm going to read out a series of things this man has said and I want you to tell me whether you think he is lying and then I'll tell you what Carrie said. Okay, okay, yeah. He has said it himself that it was during the Twilight era he became a straight-up liar. But again, sometimes things are true, so literally who knows. In 2009, Robert Pattinson says... He has never washed his hair. <laughs> he says, what a stupid lie. If you don't care if your hair's clean or not, then why would you wash it? And then he said, it's like I don't clean my apartment because I don't care. I have my apartment for sleeping in and I have my hair for just, you know, hanging out on my head. Yeah. I don't care if it's clean or not. After these quotes surfaced, unidentified crew members from Twilight told E! News that Pattinson smelled bad. (laughs) He stinks, the quote says. I mean, it's awful. He never showers and it drives people on the set crazy. And then there was a blog post by Seventeen magazine called Robert Pattinson Stinks? I'm going to show you some pictures. You can decide whether you think this man washes his hair. Please describe the image. All right, so what I'm seeing is hair that's fucking oily. It's standing up. Yeah. It's my hair after I haven't washed it for maybe three days. Okay. That's where my hair gets to. But for men, I'd say that that's weeks. Okay, how about this one? And it's like matted. This is him a few years later. His hair's a bit darker. See, with this one, I have to say... Is it product or is it oil? Ambiguity. It's so yeah. Ambiguity around, is it hair gel? Because it's got that kind of like Orlando Bloom... Shininess. Shininess. I think it looks like it stinks. And he's always got a bit that's down the mm. front that looks like it's going to leave a line of pimples. Yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah, dripping yeah. with actual oil. Yeah. Okay, I have to say, as a um, piece of content, mm-hmm. 
conversation around whether people smell <laughs> is really fun. Remember a few years ago there was a bachelor, one of the bachelors and all these anonymous people from the season came out and said that he smelled. And I it's thought, so undermining. I thought I could read about this for years. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he smells like what? Yeah. In what context? Is it when he's nervous or does he just generally have a Because nervous sweat, smell? as we know, smells different to exercise sweat. Yeah. It's stickier. Or is he turning up smelling like dirty? I really need detail because sometimes it's a dirty clothes smell. Well, this is a dirty smell. Claire, is it true or false? That he smells or that yeah, he doesn't yeah, wash his they're hair? they're both. Okay. So firstly, on the washing hair allegations... He has washed his hair before. That's ridiculous. Okay. He went but to not, a private But not school. often. But not often. Yeah. Maybe as an adult he's got a fun thing where he yeah. doesn't wash his hair. On the smelling claims, yep. he absolutely smells. I think he smells. I don't know why anyone else would come out and say that. I think it's a bit of fun. And Carrie reckons, slight exaggeration, but the man doesn't wash his hair enough. And she said it is bad for Brand because he was also the face of Dior. And you can't be the face of Dior perfume stinking. Because there's nothing worse than perfume masking <gasps> stankiness. A dirty smell. Stankiness. That's so true. It makes the perfume smell cheap. bad. Yes. Mm. Okay, next one. He bored his stalker so much that she stopped stalking him. <laughs> On The Late Show with David Letterman in 2009, and it always happens during a late show uh, when he feels like he's got to get a story yeah, yeah, and yeah. he panics. I feel like every celebrity makes up stories yeah, on me that too. show. Pattinson said that while he was filming in Spain, a woman waited outside his apartment every day. And there was this one girl who was kind of waiting outside my apartment every single day and I was so chronically bored that just one day she'd been out there for about three weeks and they said, hey, do you want to just go to dinner or something? I mean, no one else wants to, to <laughs> hang out with me. <laughs> he said that she took him to her parents' restaurant. Her parents had a restaurant. She took me to the restaurant. Oh, and, that's um, nice. Yeah, and uh, I kind of complained about everything in my life for about two hours. Mm -hmm. And then she gave me the bill at the end. <laughs> I had to pay for it. And then was never back outside my apartment ever again. <laughs> Claire, true or false? Oh, that's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because he would complain. Yeah. And I think after dinner with Robert, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to see him again. No. But I think he's trying to flex. He's trying to be like, celebrities whinge about having stalkers, but I just am so regular that yeah. I went up to my stalker. And took her out for dinner. And took her out for dinner. And I hate, I hate the detail about, like, I was chronically bored. Oh, oh sorry, you were working in Spain. Yeah, 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 but you were just so bored. But you were so bored by everyone and everything and the source material. I just, I think it's a lie. Carrie says it's a lie. Lies. Oh, lies! Yeah, yeah. She says there's no way, mm. although she likes the detail about the parents' restaurant. She says good use of good, detail. Good, good lie. We have a thing in the um, Mum Mia Weekly newsletter yeah. where two truths and people lie. have to yeah. tell two truths and a lie. And what's interesting is that you need to keep the details consistent for yeah. all three. You can't overcompensate. Because yeah. if you go too broad, yeah. if you go too narrow, often when people are lying they go too narrow. Speaking of, he was suspended from school for trying to save snails. On Ellen in 2011, Pattinson appealed to the daytime audience with a story about saving snails. He said, Everybody used to chuck snails at each other in school. And, uh, yeah, I used, to try and, I used to try and save them. And not only did I get in trouble for it, I got suspended for doing it. For saving the snails. For saving the snails. It's a big life lesson I learned. It's like, <laughs> never try and do anything nice. <laughs> okay, so firstly... That why don't you tell the happen. real story of why you got expelled from school? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Secondly, that is the most private schoolboy thing I've ever yeah. heard, throwing snails at each other. I think it's a lie and he's trying to make himself sound quirky. Yeah. And like a good person. Because he claimed that when his teacher found the snails, he was keeping them in like an egg carton, she threw them in the trash and then suspended him. Mm. Also, he has changed the details of the story. Sometimes he got suspended, sometimes he got detention, blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Lies. Oh, lies! He was a hand model. His go-to late-night story throughout the Twilight era was about his experience as a hand model when he was young. Early in your career, I know you did some hand modeling. I read about this. And uh, I think your mom was involved in this somehow, right? It, 
I don't know, this is annoying because it's one of my little talk show stories. Yeah. Which I've used over the years like many, many times. And now my mom is in the audience and I knew that because she's here, someone's going to bring it up. Yeah. And yeah. she's like, that's completely untrue. Like, you just made it up. But I think like a lot of my dreams like have intermingled with reality now. Like as I've talked about them so much. Oh, I see. <laughs> and so I think it, it's, it is either, is this true? Claire, do you think he was a hand model? No. Lies. Oh, lies! <laughs> His um, mum came on Jimmy Kimmel and just said no. Nah. I have no idea. Did I ever do hand modeling? Did your son do hand modeling and as a woman's hand model as well? I, I'm just going to say it's no. true. Well, it's interesting because you wouldn't be a hand model with that face. Because you'd come oh, in. You'd come and in. And go, let's not waste. Yeah. And they'd say, sorry, while well, we've got you. We don't just want your hands. I, I just also looking at him, I don't believe he has lovely hands. He watched a clown die. Oh, I just. In 2011. So quirky. Pattinson was interviewed by Matt Lauer about his upcoming motion picture, Water for Elephants. And when Lauer asked Pattinson whether he'd ever dreamed about joining the circus, he spiraled. He panicked. <laughs> He said, The first time I went to a circus, somebody died. One of the clowns died. (laughs) When Lauer asked Pattinson how the clown died, he said, His little car exploded. (laughs) (laughs) The joke car exploded on him. I, just as a side note, Mm -hmm. people whose brand of humour is making things up, (laughs) they (laughs) frustrate me. So you think he's lying? (laughs) Absolutely. Sorry, sorry, sorry. (laughs) I don't know how to connect with someone who's just telling lies. I I don't believe that Robert Pattinson went to the circus <laughs> and a clown's little car exploded and the clown died. No, I'm I don't trying believe to believe children. That. You don't believe it? No. Well, it didn't happen. Lies. Oh, lies! Because he said to a journalist the following week, I said those things, but I actually made the whole thing up. It's coming back to haunt me. I said it on some show. It was really early in the morning, the day after the New York premiere, and someone asked me what my experience with the circus was like, and I had nothing interesting to say, and I don't know why I said that. That's what I remember. So when you said that he told lies, I remembered him coming out and saying, I told a lie, and I don't know why. I panicked. I panicked. Yeah. All right. So that begs the question, mate, why are you lying? Mm. Well, he said he lies because he has heavy saliva. (laughs) No, Sounds you've like panicked another again. Lie. You've panicked again. <laughs> it's just another you've lie. You've panicked again. Heavy saliva. He lies because of his heavy saliva. On Jimmy Kimmel, the talk show host pressed him and said, why are you lying? And he said... I have extraordinarily heavy saliva. Oh, you mean it's got a more thickness than... Uh, it is. Like if I try and spit, I can only get it about a foot. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I mean, shouldn't you be able to spit a lot if you have heavy saliva? Carrie's really confused by this because she's trying to decipher whether it's truth or a lie. And she said, I think this one is true because I cannot imagine why anyone, even Robert Pattinson, would make this up. (laughs) To explain the lie. And then she's written, what does the viscosity of saliva have to do with lying? (laughs) Another lie. Lies. Oh, lies! His 18th birthday was kind of sad, apparently, because he's told this story in 2014. He always wanted a baby brother. Then on April Fool's Day one year, his sisters told him that their mother was pregnant. He said, I think <laughs> I think my sisters kind of always wished I was a little sister. I always wanted a little brother. They told me on my 18th birthday that my mum was pregnant on April Fool's Day. I went to school just rejoicing and basking in the fact that I'd have a mini me. At 18, I was so convinced it was the most disappointed I've ever been in my life. Truth or lie? I believe that. That I remember. Well, it's a lie because his birthday is May the 13th. <laughs> it's not April lies. Fool's Day. Oh, lies! He locked a teacher in a cupboard, apparently. In- I don't believe that. No, People no. always exaggerate stuff about school and the crazy things they did. I just can't. I can't. And so I was looking up his lies and then I got to a core question. It came up at mm. the top and it said, does the actor Robert Pattinson have a problem? <laughs> yeah, he does. Is that just a general question? Yeah. That someone's asked. <laughs> does he have a problem? Does I don't know what problem, but does he have a problem? But he a has a problem? big, uh, just a big one. Claire, he's a fucking liar. Oh, I'm not into that. I'm not into it. It's time for charges and sentences. Claire, my charge. I don't mind about lying, but his lies aren't good enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, great point. That's why it would have taken some time mm. for people to pick up on the lying. Because lying to the press, hilarious. 
Yeah. Hilarious <laughs> thing to do. Confusing. <laughs> Awkward. If I'm Jimmy Kimmel and I'm sitting there and you've just lied to me and then you walk off and go, There's oh. someone else. There's another celebrity. Yeah, who who's lies. done that. And it's it's hilarious. And it makes it really hard to write like I a think profile. It's, it's um Joaquin. Yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think there's a few of them. Yeah. All men. Who just lie. And and it does actually make it really hard to yeah. write a story because you go, okay, I don't story. know what's true and what's not. Which is hilarious. But I need Robert Pattinson to lie better. Mm-hmm. Have more oh, fun with it. Where is silliness? Not necessarily lie better, just tell better quality lies. Because what's happening is he's going on a show, he's not prepped, he panics, and he says he saw a clown die. <laughs> right? That's what's happening. Actually, no. The clown was I one of the didn't better lies. I mind that lie. <laughs> Out of all the lies, yeah. at least it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> at least it was a visual. Exactly. I liked the clown dying helped. Yeah. I have a sentence, and this doesn't happen often in the cancel courtroom, Claire. But it's a sentence we've had before. Okay. And it's a sentence I dished out to one Lance Armstrong. Oh, wow. That was years ago. Yeah. It's to try and tell the truth when everyone thinks you're lying. And this is the problem with being Robert Pattinson, is that one day you're going to be walking down the street (laughs) and you're going to see Bigfoot. (laughs) And you're going to have Jimmy Kimmel that night. And you're going to say, guys... I saw Bigfoot today. That could be my story. And they're going to go, no. No, you're a chronic liar. You're a chronic you liar. Got, you got a problem according you've to Gora. Emba- you- <laughs> <laughs> you've embarrassed Jimmy every time you've been on here because you lie and then you go say to the German press that you panicked and you lied. <laughs> we don't believe you saw Bigfoot. And he's like, no, I did. I saw Bigfoot. And you know what else? I found Madeleine McCann. No, you didn't. <laughs> Actually, yeah, so what has to happen is that he has to have a number of extraordinary things happen yes. to him in a row. Yes. And nobody believes yes. that those things happened because they're so unlikely. Yes, it's the boy who cried dead clown. <laughs> and he's going to see an alien and he's going to go, oh. I finally have proof. Exactly. Well, you don't because you're a liar. Yeah, wow, I really like that. That's a um, a catch-22. <laughs> it's tricky for him. <laughs> it's tricky, it's tricky. What's your charge? Jesse? my charge is similar yet somewhat different. Okay. And it's lying when it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I think... I've done that. That if you... Go, no, sorry, I solely I lie. I solely do this. And it it's about matter. panic. And it's... I remember... One of the weirdest lies I've ever told was mm. years and years ago. I faked a sick day. <laughs> I <laughs> from, faked from a sick work? day. Yeah, no, from like uni. Okay, okay. And that wasn't oh, the lie. Yeah, this that is the most the embarrassing lie. story. I remember this. <laughs> that wasn't the lie. And okay, the yes. weird thing was, it's like, oh, I'm sick. Email I'm not going to uni. Whatever. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going yeah. to uni. But the weird thing was, I told my partner at the time, yeah. I'm sick. Yeah. And. Then I decided to go shopping. <laughs> to a shopping centre. I must have been on the train. Like I was in transit. Yeah. And he called and said, hey, 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 I've just got to come over and print something for yeah. uni. And yeah. you're sick, so you'll be at home. And I had to say, I lied. <laughs> I don't know why. But I'm on the train. And he was like, this is so interesting. Because it's like some people lie because they're cheating, but you're lying because you're going to Burwood Westfield. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's what Robert Pattinson's doing is he's telling inconsequential lies. That's why I worry. I think there's an easy all. Because he's panicking. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result, though, I do think that there are certain things we've taken for granted that may not be true. Okay. And therefore my sentence is this. Oh, it's just so obvious. Is it Vanity Fair that does the lie detector test? Oh, yes. Yeah, they do those black and white lie detector yes, tests. Yes, yes. And he needs to do one. And he needs to be questioned on everything. What's the first question you ask him? Did you really hate Twilight? Oh, shit. Mm. What do you really think of Stephanie Meyer? Interesting, interesting. Did you think Kristen Stewart... Cheated badly. Mm. Were you ever going out with her in the first place? Great question. Or was it publicity? Was it publicity? Because I think it was. Did you cry when that clown died? (laughs) Yeah. Like I just think we've really got to go back 
to basically like, do you seriously think you can make it as a rapper? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think we've got to go back to the beginning. I've got to rewrite the wiki page because you yeah. just look at that yeah. and you go, well, he's talking about Pierce. Is your name Robert Pattinson? Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And it is youngest child energy. Only a youngest child in a family would behave like this because no one was listening to him growing up. He was the youngest. Yeah. He got away with murder. He's a little rascal. Yeah. <laughs> he does have youngest child energy. Yeah, That's yeah. very true. I have to say the other thing I'll just add into the lying yeah. mix, I never believed the Twilight relationship. And I saw a video the other day which was they won like an MTV award mm. for best on-screen kiss mm. and they had to accept it mm. after they'd broken up. And so they got on stage and Robert's like, uh, I mean, this is awkward, like should we kiss? And then he's like, I have someone else I want to kiss. And he runs into the audience and kisses the guy who plays. The, oh, yeah. The one who imprints on Renee's yeah. face. Yeah. What's his name? And I just thought the tension between them was such a lie. And there was never any chemistry. There was never any chemistry. She didn't cheat with the director. She just hooked up with him publicly. <laughs> I just don't think it was true. And I think they went, we can get away with this. Because you lie generally. Yeah. So it won't be so hard for you to tell this one. It was just such a publicity. Stunt. No, I agree. Relationship. I agree. So I'm going to need the lie detector test. Love it. That's all we've got time for on this episode of Cancel. Thank you so much for joining us. We will put receipts up at the twins underscore thoughts on Instagram. Lots of pictures of his hair. Try and work out if he washes it. That kind of thing. We put lies up. Do you think they're lie or true? Spoiler, they're all lies. <laughs> can you also please send through your lazy girl stories? You can put them in the reviews. You can send them via email, podcast at mummaya.com.au. You can send them direct message at the twins underscore thoughts on Instagram. We really want them. We love them. We collect them. We laugh. Love to have a laugh. Please send them through. If you have loved listening today, become part of the community that makes you feel seen, heard and understood like never before. Subscribe to Mum Mia. There's a link in the show notes. The executive producer of Cancelled is Talissa Pizzazz and we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.